Sorry if I'm moving strangely. I'm sore all over from a stove install yesterday. Out in the freezing cold from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Whew! I'll never, <laughs> ever install a stove again. That's uh, quite a chore, especially when it's freezing outside. Um, it is the case that, uh, and it's actually a characteristic of the nature of a human being or any living creature. Of course, we're talking about human beings that actually communicate with others, obviously, so that evil people always tell you what they're going to do. Um, by your uh, silence and letting it pass, they figure that uh, they have uh, compliance with you to do it. When this group of the WEF actually meets, interestingly enough, and certainly so without coincidence, things manifest that they tell you what they're worried about, what they think is going to happen. Uh, we all know what happened over the past couple of years, and there is a mountain of evidence of them talking about this, including making plans. Yeah, discussing that thing, which I won't discuss, that you know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, after the latest WEF meeting, of all the finest, most upstanding people on Earth, they were talking about a, a cyber attack, but not a regular cyber attack, but one to actually, I think the words of a couple people, including uh, Mr. Q-Tip, he would eat the bugs and be happy. He will own nothing. That guy. But there was actually three people at WEF that were talking about this. Apparently the basis of this meeting was many things. I don't really care about them talking about eating meat, uh, you know, trying to stop people from eating meat. It's never going to happen. Especially if you have a farm and you know how to build a fence and buy cows, you could actually raise your own meat. I could care less about that. They're actually talking about a massive cyber attack to bring everybody to their knees. There seems to be, and this is pure conjecture on my part, that there's already pre-planning, testing being done on this. There's something that's really huge that has actually happened, and it's actually being blamed on something else. I'll get that to that in a second. That, and you can Google this, by the way. They'll actually uh, blame it on... Um, uh, it's another version of uh, PayPal, Zelle, excuse me, there we go, Zelle, they're blaming it on that, but I've uh, read literally well over 1,500 comments and people talking about this, and many of these people, many of them do use Zelle, but many of them do not. They have their money actually stolen out of their accounts. So we're talking about a cyber attack to bring everyone and everything into their knee, uh, to their knees. Now, I used to do tech support for Apple, I got computers galore, iPads, and I was surrounded with all sorts of digital paraphernalia, right? But I have always known my entire life, maybe it's because I'm from a different generation, to never trust in electronic gadgets. So sorry. You know, I'm all about uh, knives and forks and axes and other tangible things that not only protect you, but also to keep you alive. So while we en all enjoy our techno babble gadgets, and, of course, everything now has a computer chip in it, essentially, including, you know, my vehicle and your vehicle, unless you've got a really old vehicle. And this reason is also the reason why these really old, basically unsafe if you get into a car wreck with them or truck wreck with them are very unsafe. But the prices have skyrocketed like crazy on, like, old vehicles that essentially have almost no electronics in them and definitely no computer chips. I mean, the price on them has absolutely gone through the roof. There's a reason for that. So anyway, this uh, group of, uh, of uh, Illuminati, oh, excuse me, I meant to say WEF, are talking about a cyber attack to bring everybody to their knees. They've been talking about that at great length. If I were to actually, not as a gambling person, I were to put money on what's going to happen this year, what they're actually so worried about is apparently going to happen. Well, the most hilarious thing I've ever seen in my life was a man bear pig. If you watched South Park, you know who man bear pig is, Mr. Mr. Gore himself. I don't know if you... His video is all over the Internet. His speech is absolutely the most radical thing I think of. Oh, you know, the climate's going to end. You know, the worth is going to uh, self-destruct any day. And it's like 60 Hiroshima, 600, I think he says. 600 Hiroshima is going off every day. It's, far, it's absolutely the most easily top two most unhinged things I've ever heard in my life. I mean, I don't know who falls for stuff like that. I think there's absolutely no coincidence to the Kiwis out there that, uh, that uh, Jeb Sinda, I will call her, retired from uh, the head of New Zealand on the opening day of the WEF. 
Uh, everybody's talking about a future recession. We're technically already in a recession. I have absolutely no doubt that we're going to actually head into a depression. What is absolutely not making the news and an effect that easily well over 100,000 people, well over, not my basis of saying that this is absolutely true. You go look this up. By the way, go to Bank of America's Instagram page. Look at their latest two or three posts. I literally, it's no exaggeration, read through over 1,500 comments. I've seen every YouTube video I can on people this personally affected. Their money was stolen out of their bank, literally. Not only was it stolen, but they were in a negative balance and they were actually being levied um, overdraft uh, charges. One great video is a guy in the back. He said, you know, my money's stolen. I'm here to uh, see about it. And he's asking everybody else in line at the Bank of America, is your money stolen? Yeah, my money's stolen. Everybody there was for the, there for the same thing. Thousands of people literally reported that they were calling tech supports like, hey, why is my bank overdrawn? You know, I keep... They could not get through. Um, many people reported that the uh, answering message from Bank of America was, sorry, we can't take your call right now. We're experiencing, not technical difficulty, we're experiencing unexpected circumstances or something. They couldn't get through. Um, this is me personally. For years and years, I've always considered that uh, all banks are evil, but I'm sorry to tell you, I, just, I have no respect for that particular entity. They've absolutely, over the years, canceled people's accounts because of a legal operated business that they would do. It's like they just don't approve of you uh, being in this legal business. I'm not talking about illegal stuff. It's like, we don't approve what you do for a living, so just shut your bank account down. Wells Fargo's been doing that too, so those are the two top... I, I feel sorry for you if you bank with that particular bank, but just type that in or go on their Instagram page. Imagine, and one lady, it was just a, a simple lady, works a, a nine-to-five job. She needed money to pay her groceries and uh, her bills, and she said that when she got through to Bank of America, they told her to call back sometime in mid-February, a month away. So not only was her money stolen from her, she was levied overdraft charges. This affected over 100,000 people. Imagine that. People, I'm sorry, you know, I don't tell anybody what to do, but don't keep all your eggs in one basket. You sh this is a perfect example of that. I don't believe, that's just me personally, the excuse they're actually giving for this. You know, oh, this was an issue with Zelle. Well, if that were true, then it would be an issue with Zelle and other banks. But there was no issue with Zelle and other banks. And this had not everything to do with Zelle. It had a large portion to do with Zelle. But many of these people had their money stolen out of their accounts. They never had or used Zelle. So that does not uh, line up with the excuse that's giving. being given. Nobody's talking about this. You could Google and read all. There's almost no news out there about it at all. But it did affect everybody across the entire country um, that was using that bank. An enormous amount of people, excuse me, not all of BOA users, but uh, very, very significant. And it didn't make the news at all, at least it hasn't yet. Um, we're already in a boom that's actually gone on for far too long. Money's uh, being misallocated to fools and nonsense. The government, of course, is a prime example of this. Uh, the recession that we're in and the upcoming depression is definitely going to be an economic enema for uh, the entire world, not just the United States. Um, apparently, most people don't seem to realize that an economy is about goods and services. It's absolutely not about money. Everybody thinks money and the economy, economy and the money. No, it's about goods and services. Looking around, and I keep my head on a swivel, and I try to take everything in that I'm seeing, and I know that's only a limited spectrum, obviously, the world, and certainly so the United States. But I ask other people, they're seeing the exact same thing, the goods and services. Right now in the United States are, like, doomed. It was just bad, really, 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 really bad shape. Um, I can't get an accurate uh, answer on the egg shortage. Even in Costco, they're, like, like limited to two packs of eggs. I know they're radically expensive in many places. The excuse they're giving for the egg shortage is a complete and total lie. Can I prove that? No, but I know it's a lie. The same reason for the assumed chip shortage for lack of vehicles. I've talked to two major dealerships again just in this past week. They have no new, not that I've ever bought a new vehicle, nor would I ever recommend anybody buy a new vehicle unless you're filthy rich. They have no new vehicles to sell. None. I think anybody that's been alive for these past few years know what's going on with the vehicles. 
Here's something that was called a conspiracy, and now every bit of evidence shows that it is coming true. A central bank digital currency is undeniably 100% coming. It is coming. No conspiracy, no ifs, no ands, and no buts, and that is an absolute hydrogen weapon. You know, the kind that, uh, you know, peel the paint off your house and, you know, turn everyone and everything to dust level of a vet. Why is, everybody's a spineless, lazy, complacent, I don't care, you know, it doesn't affect me directly. Not yet it doesn't. This is actually coming. Central bank digital currency is actually coming. That used to be like hardcore conspiratorial, and now it's confirmed. It is coming. Period. It is coming. Um, what's been revealed, and anybody that's paid attention, and I don't care what you think about Elon Musk one way or another, I'm actually ambivalent about him. The uh, Twitter files we're living, especially in the United States, but also to the world, because Twitter was worldwide. We're living in a dystopian, hardcore evil where here in the United States, the FBI and the CIA have weaponized information against its own American citizens. It's completely illegal and it's completely unconstitutional, but since you're the government, who cares? You just do it anyway, right? We don't have to pay attention to the laws. Apparently, that's the way it works now. We're not living in the United States anymore. I don't say that lightly. I don't know if you know what CalPERS is. Go look up CalPERS, C-A-L-P-R-S. It's the largest public pension fund in the country. And CalPERS affects, uh, is the pension fund for endless millions of individuals, um, uh, like firefighters, post office, teachers, public servants, so just millions and millions and millions and millions, endless millions. As announced, <coughs> CalPERS has announced a, a negative 6.1% in turn rate, return rate <coughs> Excuse me, on investment. This was out in the cold all day yesterday. For the 21-22 fiscal year, this is the first time CalPERS has suffered a net loss for fiscal year since uh, 29. After this year's financial losses, CalPERS reports that its funding ratio has plummeted from 81% to 72%. Uh, the pension system now has only 72 cents per dollar needed to provide the pensions benefit. They're basically teetering on insolvency that have already been promised to uh, current workers and retirees. I don't know if you know anything about the debt ceiling. You can say, well, the government can keep printing money. They actually can't, unless you're talking about uh, the shadow government. People actually have been talking about draining the swamp for years. You know, we talked about people talked about draining the swamp. When I first heard that, I just laughed. There's actually three swamps. There's the regular swamp that we can all see. There's the um, deep state, and right below the deep state, there's the shadow. That's not a conspiracy, by the way. That's a fact. You have the regular government, deep state, and then you have the shadow government. <laughs> the shadow government, which pulls the strings on the mick and a lot of other neat stuff that you'll never hear about. By the way, did you know the guy that uh, runs the website on area... I'm, I'm not going to say the word together. Uh, there's an old retired guy, very meek. I don't want to even name the name the website. It's the number one website on Area Five and One. Okay, on Area Five and One, they uh, is an old retired meek software engineer. It's just like his hobby to talk about this place. Uh, over two dozen FBI agents bust his door down, turned his apartment upside down, arrested him, stole everything out of his apartment. He says he wasn't breaking the law. He's just like a, uh, a site where people talk about this place in Nevada. Not breaking any law at all, but they want to shut him up. They didn't charge him with any crime because he didn't break any crime. Very meek guy. I saw the interview with him. Won't, never charge him with nothing. They won't pay for wrecking his place and stealing his stuff. Not only that, a hundred so miles away, he lived in Rachel, Nevada. He still lives in Rachel, Nevada. His girlfriend lives in Las Vegas. They bust her door down, turned her place upside down, tossed her out in the street wearing nothing but her undies, arrested her, you know, wrecked her life just because she was the girlfriend. That tells you everything you need to know about uh, the current state of illegality that's going on in this particular country. Anyway, the $31.4 trillion, which is an inimaginable number of debt ceiling, has been, uh, uh, been surpassed. They say they're going to implement um, a radical measures to take care of it, but the two measures that they can actually implement will either wreck the economy or cause hyper, hyper inflation. So they're extraordinary measures to deal with the fact that we've broken the debt ceiling. It's bad and worse. The worst one that they're not talking about 
is the consequences of default. A default, uh, or even the perceived uh, threat of a default on this debt ceiling, which has already been surpassed, uh, would have serious negative economic implications globally, absolutely globally. Um, Russia, of course, is uh, saber-rattling. They're uh, warning uh, the United States. And here's the, uh, the mouthpiece of Rutin, Tutin, Putin here. Suppliers of offensive uh, uh, weaponry to the Kiev regime would uh, lead to global disaster. If Washington and NATO countries send any more stuff that can be used for attack on peaceful cities or attempts, yeah, peaceful cities, right, uh, or attempts at occupying our lands, a threat uh, that they have been making, and we are sending this stuff to, to uh, Ukraine, and I'm not taking any position on this one way or another. This would provoke retaliatory measures which will, uh, with the use of a more powerful, and I don't care what anybody thinks about Russia one way or the other, or Ukraine, but an undeniable fact of what has been used offensively by the Russians in Ukraine doesn't even scratch the surface of what they have. And I'm not talking about nukes. I'm talking about stuff that's a lot more wicked. So that statement is a statement of fact. I could see, actually, a cyber, and this is pure speculation, on my part, but I could see this since the, the great wonderful entities that met in Davos. By the way, they, there was one protester, Avi Yemeni covered him, one protester at Davos in Switzerland, the Schweiz, yeah? One protester, an elderly, meek man who was like holding a small poster of protest standing out in the street. One meek man, elderly. And even them, even that guy, them, excuse me, even that guy was bum-rushed by who knows what version of Davos's police or secret police. Bum-rushed him out of there. One elderly protest. They couldn't even handle that. They are so afraid of the evil that they're spinning at that meeting in Davos. But I could see that we send, of course, we're sending Patriot missile batteries to uh, Ukraine and all sorts of other exotic uh, stuff. Not the most exotic, but... We're certainly keeping the money rolling into the military-industrial complex by sending all that to Kiev, to uh, Ukraine, which I take no, no position on one way or the other. I could see that uh, we'd have a huge cyber attack. It would affect global community. And we're going to point the finger at Russia. Oh, look at that. As Russia said that they would retaliate, which they just said that they would retaliate. I could see this happening. Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not predicting the future. Something along those lines. They're warning. They just got out of the Davos meeting. They warn everybody. Warning, warning. It's going to be a cyber attack. Huge. We see it crippling. Not like a regular cyber attack, which affects one area of business, but one that cripples the whole world, or at least this country, United States. I say, well, we're going to blame it on Russia. Russia's been uh, threatening us for sending uh, defensive armaments to Ukraine. So this uh, cyber attack, Russia, Russia. <laughs> uh, it's not funny at all, but I can certainly see this. You should look into CalPERS and all these pensions of funds of countless millions of Americans is teetering on insolvency. Isn't that interesting? I will remind you once again, the society is the largest volcano on earth, the thinnest crust that sits over top the largest volcano on earth. That's what society is. Oh, everything's nice and peaceful. Everything's okay. We have law and order and grocery stores and police and, you know, garbage pickup. It's the thinnest crust over the most, uh, the largest volcano imaginable. Consequences of default, by the way, are completely unimaginable. If you don't know what happened at Bank America last week, you should go look into it. And I wouldn't buy the uh, Zell excuse that they were given. Because Zell operates with countless thousands of different bank entities and no other bank industry had an issue with uh, Zelle. It was only that particular bank. These people they had all their eggs in one basket, couldn't pay their bills, couldn't feed their own family. Money's gone. Thousands of people were poor. I read way over 1,500 comments. Took a long time. Scrolled through them. You should go onto their Instagram page. They might have deleted all the comments there now. It's like, this is a lot of negative press. Everybody's like, I'm going to sue you. I'm going to sue you. Um, you stole my money, you stole my money, you stole my money. Uh, I'm, I'm going to close my account next week. I'm going to close my account. On and on and on. Shouldn't have all your eggs in one basket. Now, I don't tell anybody what to do, but if you don't have like 30% of your liquid assets somewhere on hand, have a nice safe 
on hand, somehow easily accessible. You know when you put your money into the bank, it's, you know, you could think it's yours. My money, it's in the bank. Look, there's my checking account. Just checked it again. I got two grand in my checking account. You think it's yours, but it's really not. Affected over 100,000 people instantly. Like, oh, can't pay the bills. Oh, can't feed my family. My money was in my bank. I thought it was mine, but it was really in possession by the bank. Oh, it's gone. Am I saying that they're not going to resolve this? I'm not saying that one way or another. I mean, they would have a gazillion lawsuits if they didn't get it resolved. But in the meantime, these people suffer without the ability to pay their bills or feed their families. This is the same way we did with cave diving instructions. There used to be a cave diver in the spring systems in central Florida, and one of the rules was with your air, you know, when you cave dive, which is wickedly dangerous, you have a third in of your air in to go all the way in as far as you want to go or need to go. A third to get out, obviously, because it took you a third to get in, and a third for emergencies. You, not that I tell anybody what to do, but you should have like 30% of your liquid assets on hand. You got it all, it's in the bank, it's safe there, it's in the bank. No, that's the bank's money. You know, they just let you take it out. You ever thought about that before? It's because it's your money and it's in your bank that it's still your money. See some of the hoops people have had to jump through to get it taken out. It's like, ooh, it's stolen. And they, fr they froze all my assets. Oh, no. People, a lot of people don't realize this. I don't trust the dollar. I don't trust any paper currency. You should have a certain percentage of your money for asset diversification, and I don't pretend to be any guru of money, so don't go attacking me. This is common sense of somebody that has a half a brain. I've got way more than a half a brain, actually. I'm fat, bold, and tattooed, but I am not stupid. Don't put any money in anything that the government controls. This means gold, silver, platinum, Land, and you're like, oh, it's not really your land. You got paper and taxes on it. Still, it's your land. You can say that all you want. I know how it works. I own land. I own more than a few pieces of land. Uh, I, I know how land works. I know about property taxes. I know all that. But uh, you should have a certain percentage for, you know, I'm not calling it rainy day, but you certainly shouldn't trust your bank. You shouldn't have all your money in your bank, and you should definitely have things that are not under the control of the government. What that, what's that, what are the experts like Ray Dalio and uh, Charlie Munger and Robert Kiyosaki, what do they all say, cash is trash? Not that cash is actually trash, but I mean, it is. And one last thing which will make people upset, uh, crypto is still a scam, always has been, always will be. People say, well, it's not under government control. Yeah, you think that, right? You still need electricity for it to work, an internet for it to work, and a network for it to work, and you need a group of fools to believe in it, just like a religion. Let me remind you that on crypto. It needs electricity, internet, network, and a group of fools to believe in it. Without those four things, it needs all four of those things, it does not function. And whenever, if ever, the poop hits the fan, the first thing on this earth that will vanish like a fart in the wind is crypto. And that's not my opinion. That is a fact. Go ahead and hate on me for it, but it's still a fact. Fart in the wind. <laughs>